Okay, welcome back to Linear Algebra. We're going to continue working in section 2.2. Last time we were looking at once you choose ordered bases for a vector space, and naturally every, every linear map naturally gives rise to a certain matrix, the matrix representation of that linear map. So in this part of the uh, section, we're going to talk about the set of all linear transformations from V to W. It's denoted by LVW. I want to show you that that is itself a vector space. Okay, so, so uh, that's the contents of theorem 2.7. And then, well, given these ordered bases, I want to explore this correspondence a little bit more. Every linear transformation gives rise to a matrix. After theorem 2.7, the set of linear transformations and the set of matrices are both vector spaces, and those vector spaces have a lot of structure in common. Okay, so we're going to kind of summarize that in a much more detailed fashion in, in theorem 2.8. So let's get going here. Here's the main definition. If you give me two vector spaces, V and W, uh, their vector spaces, of course, over the same field F. Yeah? And, and let's say that their dimensions are respectively N and M. So V has dimension N, N. Uh, uh, I'll write it. Dimension of V is N. The dimension of W is M. So we'll just keep everything in kind of alphabetical order. And by this set, LVW, LVW, it's just the set of all functions from V to W that are linear. Okay, so it's the set of linear transformations from V to W. So the L, if you like, stands for linear transformations. So I like this notation. It's linear transformations from V to W. Okay, and these are functions, so we can add them and scale them point-wise. So, so if you give me, we're going to define addition and scalar multiplication on the set LVW by, if you take two linear transformations, T1 and T2, I'm calling them, and you take a scalar, then uh, uh, for every element in the domain, T1 plus T2 of V is by definition the sum of the values of T. I'll call that point-wise addition, yeah? Point-wise addition. And likewise, uh, if the, the function ct1's value at v is by definition c times t1 of v, point-wise scalar multiplication. I'm just going to say that one. Okay, so what is the theorem? Theorem 2.7, that those two operations make LVW into a vector space. Yeah, the theorem is that LVW is a vector space over the same field under point-wise addition and scalar multiplication, those operations that we just defined. All right, so the main issue here in this proof is to show that if you take two linear transformations, T1 and T2, from V to W, well, that their sum and a scalar multiple of one of them is itself a linear transformation, yeah? So I have to show you that those operations uh, are actually operations on LVW. Right, so I have to show you that if I take two things from LVW, their sum is in LVW and also a scalar multiple of one of them. Okay, so, so how am I gonna do that? I gotta show that their sum for among other things is linear. So that's why I'm starting my proof here. I'm taking two linear transformations from V to W and then I'm gonna take a couple of input vectors, U and V from V. And then I'm looking at T1 plus T2's value at U plus V. And all of this follows, I'm just gonna kind of walk you through it and, and say out loud what, what properties I'm using. Well, first of all, uh, this first equality, that's the, the definition of the way we add functions, right? T1 plus T2's value at a vector is T1 at that vector plus T2 at that vector. So that's the definition of pointwise addition. Now, what am I doing? I'm using the fact that T1 and T2 are themselves linear. Right, so T1's value on a sum is the sum of the T1 values, and same for T2. Uh, the third line, I'm just rearranging the order of the addition, writing T1 of U, T2 of U first, T1 of V, T2 of V second. Uh, uh, that's because addition is commutative. And then by the definition of uh, T1 plus T2 again. Okay, so since U and V were arbitrary elements of the domain, uh, uh, that shows that T1 uh, uh, is additive. T1 plus T2, rather, sorry, is additive. So, so likewise, uh, if you take a scalar, you apply T1 plus T2's value to, say, C times U, same kind of steps. Let me just let you see them. Uh, uh, the first one is by the definition of the sum of the T's. Okay, now I'm using the fact that T1 and T2 are themselves linear, so that constant C can come out. 
Now I'm using one of the vector space axioms, the distributive law. Maybe you stop the video and go look at which axiom I'm using. It would be, I don't have a memorized V7 or maybe V8. Uh, uh, and now uh, I'm just using the definition of the sum of the t's again, right? I have this constant, t1 plus t2 of u, by definition is t1 plus t2 of u. Okay, so those two parts of the, get, the, the uh, proof together show that T1 is additive and T1 sends scalars to scalars. T1 plus T2 everywhere, sorry, T1 plus T2. So that shows that T1 plus T2 is a linear map. It's a linear map from V to W. Okay, I think I'm going to omit the details, but likewise, you can show that if you take some scalar F, scalar times T1 is also linear. All right, so what does that do? That shows that those pointwise addition and scalar multiplication operations, they're actually operations on LVW, right? The sum of these two functions isn't just any old function, it's a linear function. Cool. All right, well, uh, now we need to verify vector space axioms, but I'm gonna leave that to you because verifying the eight vector space axioms, it proceeds exactly in the way uh, that you do when you're verifying those axioms for the set of all functions from S to F, right? The key point is what, uh, when you're doing that, F is a place where you can add and the addition is commutative, it's associative and so on. Well, all of that is true in W as well, all right? So it's a vector space. It's a vector space. You might want to think about things like what's the additive identity? The linear function from V to W uh, uh, that is the additive identity is just the constant function zero, right? If you take the function for every V, it outputs the zero vector in W. That's your vector space axiom three candidate and so on. So I'm going to leave the details of that to you. Okay, it's moving on here. So now let's pick some bases. And I, I'm kind of lazy about this because I say basis, I always really mean an ordered basis. So when I pick a basis, I have a specific ordering in mind. So I'm picking a bit, two, two bases, two bases. Beta is a basis for V. I'm calling its elements V1 to Vn. So the dimension of V is N. Gamma is a basis for W. I'm calling its elements W1 to Wn. Okay, so the dimension of V is N, dimension of W is M. These are my ordered bases in my notation. Last time in the first video lecture of section 2.2, we showed that if you take a linear function, a linear transformation from V to W, once you choose these ordered bases, it naturally gives rise to a matrix. Yeah, this is an M by N matrix uh, uh, over the field F. And it's determined by the, the linear transformation T once you choose those ordered bases, okay? So the theorem 2.8 says that the addition of linear maps and the addition of those matrix representations, the scalar multiplication as well, are completely compatible. So what do I mean by that? If you take two transformations, T1 and T2, and you take a scalar from the field, let me just sort of read this out loud to you as you're looking. It says that if you want to look at the matrix, everything with respect to these ordered bases, beta and gamma, the matrix of the operator or of the linear transformation T1 plus T2, that matrix is just the sum of the matrices for T1 and T2 separately. Okay, so our correspondence between linear transformations and matrices is preserved under matrix addition. The matrix of the sum is the sum of the matrices. Part two says the same exact thing is true for scalar multiples. The matrix of C times T1 is just C times the matrix that corresponds to T1. Okay, so let's look at the proof of this thing. I tried to write it out carefully and I'll narrate it. I'm gonna talk fast, but you can, you can uh, 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 stop the video. Uh, I want to say that the nature of this theorem, uh, uh, let's talk about the first part first here. It says the two matrices are equal. Yeah, it says that I know that this matrix is equal to this one. Well, the only way to show two matrices are equal is to show that they have the same entry. That they have the same entry. We know they're the same size, right? The dimension of all three of these matrices is M by N. So the matrix addition makes sense. So we just have to make sure that the ij entry for i between 1 and um, 
m and j between 1 and n are the same. So really, I just need to set up some notation. So that's what I'm going to do here. So let me take my jth basis vector, uh, my jth basis vector in v, and let me write that t of it is given by this. OK? And then t2 of it, sorry, t that was t1. t2 of it is given by uh, that expression. So I'm writing them as linear combinations of the basis vectors for w. So by definition, the fact that, say, t of vj is this sum of aij times wi means that the matrix, this is the definition of the matrix, the matrix of t in the ordered basis beta and gamma is the matrix whose ij entry is ij. Here, everywhere, i is between 1 and m and j is between 1 and n. Likewise, the matrix for beta uh, t2 is bj. So I'm just giving notation for those. I'm just calling the coefficients aij and bij. So by definition, those are those two matrices. Okay, so we automatically know what the uh, uh, entries of the right hand, oh, sorry about that, darn it. Uh, uh, we automatically know what the entries of the right hand side of this, of this equation are. Well, it would be the matrix whose entries are aij plus bij, because that's how you add matrices. So let's check out this side. How do you find the matrix of a linear map? Well, you take your linear map, and you apply it to every basis vector. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take my linear map, T1 plus T2, and apply it to the jth basis vector. T is linear, so I push it through. It's T1 of Vj plus T2 of Vj. I just said that we have expressions for those things. They're given by those sums. Now I'm just manipulating that finite sum. I'm just gathering terms, right? So by definition, Again, by definition, when I apply this linear map, t1 plus t2, to the jth basis vector, and I know that there is one and only one way to write the image of, of vj as a linear combination of the, of the gamma basis, these are the coefficients. So by uniqueness, right, every vector has unique coordinates in this ordered basis. So this computation tells me that the matrix ij entry the ij entry of t1 plus t2's matrix is the number aij plus bij, the field element aij plus bij. That's by definition. Because when you take a linear map and apply it to a basis vector, you write it as a sum of the target bases, those coefficients are the entries of the matrix. They're the column, the jth column. All right, so, so you put that together, aij plus bij, that's exactly the, the uh, uh, entries of the matrix where you add those things together. So there you go. Entry by entry, I've shown those are the same matrix. Uh, likewise, we can continue if you take a scalar, take the operator, oops, sorry about that, take the operator uh, c times t1 and apply it to the jth basis vector, use the linearity of t. We already said t of vj is given by this sum, and then distribute the c's through there. So at the end of the day, this operator, ct1, when you apply it to the jth basis vector, these are your coefficients, okay? That reveals what the matrix is. I would stop the video and make sure you kind of digest this. That computation tells me that this matrix in the basis beta gamma is the matrix whose entries are c times aij. Because as soon as I know the coefficients of the target basis gamma, I know the matrix entries. But certainly by matrix operations, C times AIJ is C times the matrix whose entries are AIJ. And that exactly says that the matrix that goes with the operator CT1 is C times the matrix that goes with T1. Okay, so that completes the proof of the theorem. Nice. Okay, so just to kind of recap here. If we choose ordered bases, beta for V and gamma for W, this correspondence, linear maps, correspond to matrices, it preserves matrix sum uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, scalar multiplication. The matrix that goes with CT1 plus T2 is just C times the matrix that goes with T1 plus the matrix that goes with T2. So this correspondence is, it preserves the, the uh, algebra structure here, the, the, the addition and scalar multiplication. But there's more. I know I'm talking fast. Pause. Soak this in as you go. Don't, don't try to go at the same speed as me because I'm talking too fast. 
but, but what do I want to say? Uh, 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 let's suppose the, these two operators, T1 and T2, have the same matrices. Okay, so I start with two operators, T1 and T2. I write their matrices down in these ordered basis, and they're the same matrix, right? So when I put all this decoration on this stuff, it's a matrix. Good. Okay, well, if they're the same matrix, what I'm trying to write here is they have the same IJ entries for all I and J. Okay, they have the same IJ entries. This notation looks a little weird, but just remember, let me kind of come over here in a, in a side color. If A is a matrix, AIJ is how we denote the uh, uh, IJ entry of the matrix A, right? So I write brackets around that. So that's all I'm doing over here is I'm writing, okay, well, I've got this matrix. It's called T1 beta gamma, very complicated notation. If I write a little subscript IJ out there, I just mean it's IJ entry. It's consistent with our notation. So my statement is if the two matrices are equal, their IJ entries are equal for all values of I and J. In the notation above, that means that AIJ is BIJ. Okay, but that means that the sum of those things times the WIs uh, are going to be equal. That is, T of VJ, T1 of VJ is equal to T2 of VJ. But, but if T1 and T2 agree on a basis, they're equal. Okay, so what does that mean? This map uh, that gives me a matrix that corresponds to a linear operator, when the matrices are equal, the linear operators are equal. That means our correspondence is one to one. This correspondence between LVW and matrices, uh, M by N matrices, it's a one-to-one -one map. Two different operator, two different linear transformations always have a different matrix. It's cool. Uh, it's also onto, because if you just give me some matrix, let's call it A, uh, uh, here I'm kind of breaking my uh, notational convention here. I called that thing alpha. Let me Let me stick with my, original notation. So let me call the entries of this A, I, J. So you you hand me some matrix, right? So it has entries, capital A, I, J. Well, then by theorem 2.6, theorem 2.6 says that you can pick the target for any basis vector in the codomain that you like, and there's a unique linear map that sends the basis vectors to those targets. So my target is gonna be, I'm gonna fix this up, I'm going to take those numbers, capital AIJ, for a given J. I'm going to multiply AIJ by WI and sum them. That's an element of W. Yeah? So I can map the vector VJ to this element of W, and theorem 2.6 says that there is a unique linear map that does that. So this definition by theorem 2.6 defines a linear map. In fact, it's unique. And by construction, the matrix of T in the ordered basis beta gamma is going to be the matrix A, because I've exactly cooked up the uh, uh, image of the jth basis vector to be these scalars AIJ. So, so every matrix comes from a linear transformation. Okay, so uh, I was talking fast. There's a lot to digest here. I'm going to end by just sort of putting out there this, this sort of vague idea. Um, we have this correspondence, all right, as I'm saying it, we have a correspondence between matrices, or sorry, linear transformations and matrices once you choose an ordered basis. And that correspondence preserves some scalar multiples, and it's actually one-to-one -one and onto. Every matrix corresponds to an oper or, or a linear transformation and vice versa. So in some sense, a sense that will make more precise as we go, but I'm just gonna plant the seed here. This vector space, we proved it's a vector space today of linear transformations and the vector space of M by N matrices, they, they kind of seem like they're the same in some sense. Certainly they're not the same in a literal sense. This is a set of functions. This is a set of matrices. They're not the same kind of animal, but they, there is this sort of natural correspondence and algebraically they're kind of behaving the same. Okay, so thanks for listening.